Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So, in this video, let us discuss about production of glutamic acid and aspartic acid. So, in previous video, I have explained you about the production of citric acid and lactic acid, right? And even I explained about the fermentation process also. So, once if you see the process of fermentation, then you can understand the concept of this production of organic acids. So, the link of that videos will be given in the description box. So, if you watch the fermentation process, then you can understand how this production of glutamic acid as well as the aspartic acid will be done. So, now let us discuss firstly about glutamic acid and then later discuss about the aspartic acid. Coming to the glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is most important for brain metabolism, which is used in treating various neuropathic diseases. Right? So, it is mainly used for the treating of neuropathic diseases because it is mainly used for brain functioning. Hence, this glutamic acid plays a major and vital role in our human body. And the main bacterium, the main microorganism which is mainly used during the production of the glutamic acid is Corinibacterium glutamicum. So, during the process of the fermentation, you are going to add this bacterium, this microorganism. Once you, uh, once you, why these microorganisms will be used? This mainly used for the proper production of the glutamic acid. So, for the production of particular type of organic acids depend upon the type of microorganisms which are going to add during the process of the fermentation. Right? And the supplements which are going to add during the fermentation are phosphate and vitamins. Supplements are nothing but which comes under the classification of nutrient medium. Right? And even in the process, in the I have explained to you about the fermentation I have said you, right? So, in that video itself, I have explained to you detail, detail information upon this nutrient medium. So, once if you see the information which I have provided on the nutrient medium, then you can understand what are the nutrients which are present in that nutrient medium. Right? And now, coming to the raw material which you are going to use for the production of glutamic acid is sugar cane or sugar beet or corn. Right? So, uh, from this you can use any one of the raw material for the production of glutamic acid by using the bacterium which is called as Corinibacterium glutamicum right and this glutamic acid can be produced by the fermentation by two processes you know the, there are two uh, processes of fermentation there are batch fermentation and fed batch fermentation even continuous fermentation will also be present but here uh, the glutamic acid can be produced by batch fermentation as well as the fed batch fermentation so actually I am not going to explain briefly about this batch fermentation and fed batch fermentation but let us see what is what is meant by this batch and fed batch. So to discuss about this batch fermentation the nutrients are added at once at the beginning of the fermentation which indicates that at the initiation process of the fermentation at the beginning of the fermentation you are going to add this nutrients that is called as batch fermentation and not you are not going to add it the process of the fermentation or at the end of the fermentation you are not going to add the nutrients you are going to add this nutrients at the beginning of the fermentation itself right and coming to the fed batch the fermenter is filled with only some medium at the initiation process at the beginning of the fermentation firstly you are going to fill the fermenter with some of the nutrient medium and later during the process of the fermentation additional nutrients will be added continuously or intermittently which indicates that firstly you are going to fill the fermenter tank with the nutrient medium and you are going to continue the fermentation process and during that continuation of the fermentation process you are going to add the additional nutrients intermittently or continuously and thus the products can be obtained but the products can be obtained either by batch fermentation as well as the fed batch fermentation okay so this is about batch as well as the fed batch fermentation and now coming to the nitrogen sources Ammonia as well as the ammonium sulphate are the nitrogen sources which are required for the production of the glutamic acid by fermentation process. As well, uh, coming to this raw material, sugar cane, sugar beet and corn are highly, I, I think I have completed this point, okay. And I have completed this point and normally sugar cane, sugar beet and corn are used. Normally these are the glucose sources, right, carbohydrates which comes under the classification of the carbohydrates. So these are the raw material which are highly used. And what are the uses of this glutamic acid? It is mainly used as hair restorer in cosmetics. That's nothing but it is mainly used in cosmetics which is which can be applied for the hair such that it prevents the hair fall or else uh, you know it develops the hair growth. And it also helps in preventing the wrinkles. So uh, as, the, as the wrinkles will get prevented then it stops the aging process. Right. So this is about the glutamic acid introduction. So now let us discuss how this glutamic acid will be produced. So now let us discuss about the production of the glutamic acid. So firstly what you are going to do is that you are going to take the sugar cane. You are going to select some of the sugar canes and you are going to cut them into the pieces such that to obtain the sugar cane juice from it. And that sugar cane juice is called as starch. Right. And normally what is the main aim of the fermentation? 
to convert primary metabolites into the secondary metabolites and here the primary metabolites indicates the carbohydrate source which are going to take so not only the sugar cane you can also take sugar beet or as corn right so normally you are going to take this uh, glucose source or uh, uh, glucose source as well as the carbohydrate source right and now you are going to obtain juice from them so here you are going to obtain the sugar cane juice because we have selected the sugar cane here right and now what you are going to do is that you are going to clean the fermenter tank with water so why are you going to clean the fermenter tank with water because to avoid the contamination of the microorganism which you are going to select right so after the cleaning of the fermenter tank you are going to pour all of this juice into the sugar cane juice into the fermentation tank you are going to add the sugar cane juice into the fermentation tank and now on the other hand you are also going to add the nutrient medium into this fermentation tank right and the nutrient medium consists of nitrogen source and not only the nitrogen source it also consists of different type of ingredients as i have said to you in the video of the fermentation you can understand the concept of the nutrient medium which is mainly used for the fermentation process so the nutrient medium along with the nitrogen source will be added into the fermentation tank and now on the other hand you are also going to add the microorganism which is mainly responsible for the production of the glutamic acid so what is that microorganism corani bacterium glutamicum is a microorganism right so now you are going to add this ingredient first ingredient second ingredient third ingredient so totally three ingredients you are going to add in this fermentation tank and of course this fermentation tank is called as fermenter or as it is also called as bioreactor and now you are going to continue the process of this fermentation you are going to uh, you know you are going to switch on the switch and then you are going to continue the process of this fermentation tank right and here the continuous electricity will be uh, generated where it uh, where it will be connected to the generator to the main board such that there will be no electricity power cut and now here the temperature which you have to control is 30 to 35 degrees celsius for 36 to 48 hours and the ph should be maintained with 7 to 7.8 right after 36 to 48 hours after 48 hours then the raw product will be obtained from that fermentation tank and this raw product will be uh, this raw product will be protruded out from that outlet of that fermentation tank so that raw product will be at collected but that raw product which has been collected will be unpure in form so to make it pure what you are going to do you are going to do the process of filtration so all of this raw product will be collected and it will undergo the process of the filtration you are going to filtrate them by using rotatory vacuum filter and then pure form of glutamic acid will be produced right pure form of the glutamic acid will be produced it is stored and preserved and will be supplied to the markets so this is about the glutamic acid production so now let us see about the aspartic acid now let us discuss about this aspartic acid this aspartic acid is used as artificial sweetener where this aspartic acid can be produced from fungal species like aspergillus niger and it can be also pro produced by using some of the microorganisms like proteus vulgaris escherichia coli pseudomonas aerobacteriogens bacillus megatherium so these are the some of the microorganisms which are mainly responsible for the production of the aspartic acid and in many industries e coli is used escherichia coli is highly used rather than this all of these microorganisms escherichia coli is highly used for the production of the aspartic acid so what is the what are the main uses of this aspartic acid it is mainly used as intermediate in pharmaceuticals and it is also used for the sweetener in the cool drinks such that it provides sweet taste and it is also used as cosmetics cosmetics is nothing but it is also used for the preventing the hair fall and it in, and it promotes the hair growth and it is also used for the production of organic chemicals and the raw materials which are going to use for the production of this aspartic acid are animal sources as well as the vegetable sources and the animal sources includes oysters luncheon meats as well as the sausage meats right and now coming to this vegetable sources sprouts oats young sugar cane as well as the sugar beet are highly used for the production of the aspartic acid and here the same process will be done for the as if you see in the case of the production of glutamic acid the same process will be done here so what i have said you in the production of the uh, glutamic acid here you are going to take the sugar cane as a primary product right primary metabolite right so here the primary metabolite should get converted into secondary metabolite that is the main aim of the fermentation tank right so now this in here you get you can also take sugar cane for the production of the aspartic acid so you can also take the animal source as well as the vegetable source i have said you so you are going to do the process same such that you are going to obtain the juices from them and you are going to place them in the fermentation tank and you are also going to add the appropriate microorganism so in the case of this aspartic acid you are going to take 
Escherichia coli, right? You are going to add the Escherichia coli bacterium inside this. And here the nutrient medium along with the nitrogen sources will also be added into the fermentation tank such that uh, the temperature should be maintained. Same temperature should be maintained 30 to 35 degrees Celsius for 36 to 48 hours. And here the electricity should be continu continuously supplied where the generator should be connected to the main board and the pH should be maintained with 7 to 7.8 such that the raw product will be obtained again which is unpure in form and once you do the filtration by using a rotary vacuum filter then aspartic acid will be formed because here I am explaining you about the case of aspartic acid then the aspartic acid will be formed there will be stored and preserved and supplied to the markets. So this is about the production of glutamic acid as well as the aspartic acid. So if you like my explanation, you can like this video, you can subscribe my channel and if you have any doubts regarding this video, you can comment in the comment box, I am going to clarify doubts immediately. Thank you.